lovely people. So it is Monday, April 19th. It is a little bit before 10 a.m. and I thought it'd be really fun to do another 24 hour reading vlog. I had so much fun filming that video last week and it really just gave me a very ferocious appetite for reading. I am going to have a lot of time today to listen to audiobooks specifically. I do have some work I need to get done, um, but it'll be really fun to put on my audiobook I'm listening to. I'm sure Alayla will also demand we go to the dog park as she does most days. I'm gonna have a lot of time to listen and I really am just very wanting to read physically. So I did go to Orange Theory a little bit early today. I went to the seven o'clock class instead of the nine o'clock class. So it is earlier. I've just been sitting here I uh, journaled in my monk manual a little bit. I wrote a little bit in my reading journal and I was listening to my audiobook. I was like, you know what? I wanna film another vlog. So here we are. Currently, I am in the middle of quite a few books as always. So these are the books I am prioritizing uh, right now. I have not read any further in The Poet X since my vlog from last week. So I am still on page 92, just about to start part two. I'm sure I will pick this up and hopefully finish it today. I am really enjoying it. I didn't want to just kind of fly through it though. I do want to savor it a little bit. I am also physically reading Legendborn right now. I am on page 99 and I'm really enjoying this. I was really, in the mood to read fantasy, which genuinely doesn't happen very often, at least recently. This is exactly what I was looking for. It is a fantasy that's still rooted in reality and I am really enjoying it. I also went to the library and picked up Check Please book two, and this is the final book and I am on page 56. I will say I'm not enjoying the beginning of this as much as I enjoyed the first book, but I still really wanna see what happens. And then for my audiobook, I'm actually listening to Unbirthday and I am loving it. Friday, I actually cleaned the whole apartment and I had this audiobook going for most of the time and I listened to half of it. And this is a, I think it's a 13 hour audio book. So, it, I mean, it's a pretty hefty book. I'm a little bit more than halfway. At this point, I'm on page 264, chapter 21, if I was physically reading it, but you can see I've just read a lot of it. Um, I really want to finish this today. You can kind of see it's a little water damaged. Um, I did take this with me and a water bottle spilled on it, unfortunately. Um, so now it just has a little extra character, a little extra love, and that's fine. But I figured I really wanted to read it, but the water was kind of like bothering me, so I just picked up the audiobook. Alice in Wonderland is my favorite Disney movie, and I actually, on Libby, I have, um, I think it's called Part of Your World, which is like the Little Mermaid Disney twisted tale that I really want to listen to after that. The Little Mermaid was my favorite Disney movie when I was little. So I think that will be really fun to kind of listen to them back to back. So those are the books I'm in the middle of right now. I would like to pick up some other books as well. So I do really want to read this. Um, this is Your Brain on Food. I talked about this in my TBR for the month and I haven't started it yet. I was waiting till I finished Evicted, but I feel like Evicted is just, I'm going to enjoy it more if I just take a longer time to read it. And this I'm very curious and really wanna pick up now. So I don't think I'm going to like read this entire book today by any means, but I would like to get into it and read a um, couple chapters at least. And then I do have some more library books. As I said, I went to the library. So I did get Through the Woods, which is a graphic novel. It looks pretty short, so I can probably squeeze this in maybe at lunch. And then I have volumes 
one through three of Sailor Moon, the Eternal Edition that I'm very excited to read. These are very hefty, heavy books, but the art just looks so fun. And Sailor Moon was probably my favorite TV show when I was a kid. So it'll be fun to kind of revisit it in a new format. And then just for fun, I got an anthology, um, Don't Call Me Crazy. And it's 33 voices start the conversation about mental health. I feel like these two just pair so nicely together and it'll be just a really great time. So as it is almost, it's a minute until 10 o'clock. I am going to collect myself. I think I'm gonna make a little bit of breakfast, continue listening to my audiobook, and I am sure any minute, Alayla is just going to freak out and we're gonna go down to the dog park. So I will catch up with you guys when I've made some progress. So it is about 12.30, so it's been a couple hours. I did enjoy my breakfast. As you guys saw, I just made a English muffin and put a little bit of butter on it. And then I had apples and you couldn't really see, but there were was a little bit of banana caught up underneath with some almond butter. And I did end up reading a little bit more of Check Please. I read about 50 pages. I'm on 102. So I just kind of have a slip of paper. So I'm not like super far in, maybe like a third of the way. I'm still not super into this story and I'm really disappointed. I think my problem with it is there's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of writing and you can kind of just see on this page that like there's just so much talking. It's such a big contrast from the graphic novels I have been reading. And that's something I've been appreciating about the graphic novels that I've picked up this past week, that the dialogue and like the text isn't super heavy in it, but it's still so powerful. Like you're still feeling this emotion and through, you know, the illustrations, you're still getting the story. And this is just basically telling everybody's thoughts all the time. And I think that's why I'm not connecting with it as much. I'm still gonna finish it. I need to know what happens. The first book ends with Jack and Eric kissing. There was kind of this tension all throughout the first book and it just leaves off in this cliffhanger. Jack graduates. But before he officially leaves campus for the last time, he comes back to Eric and they have this magnificent moment. So this book picks up a few months after that and it, Eric kind of catches us up on what has been going on. You know, they're dating now and I do really appreciate they have really amazing communication and they really approach problems together and I think they have a very healthy relationship in that aspect but I don't know it's something about the way like Eric talks to Jack and like they're just two such different personalities I feel like it's just not meshing and I don't know it's I'm just not like vibing with it as much as I thought I would so I hope to finish it today. I might set it aside and take my time with it a little bit more because I don't want to force myself to read it and then not want to pick up anything else. Kind of on the flip side though, I did make a lot more progress with Unbirthday. As you can see, I read, well I listened because I'm listening to this as an audiobook, um, a little bit more than like 140 pages I think. I am currently on page 396, so there's this much left, and things just got crazy. I don't know if I really gave a proper summary of this, but if you are not familiar, there is this Twisted Tale series, and it's retellings of all of these classic Disney stories, but with a twist, and it's supposed to be dark. So this one is obviously Alice in Wonderland themed. The whole kind of gimmick of it is what if Wonderland was in trouble, but Alice was very, very late. So 
This story picks up when Alice is 18, which is super cool. Just seeing the kind of young adult she has grown into be. It's just really cool to see the kind of young adult she has grown into be. And she finds herself being drawn back into Wonderland. So she loves to take pictures and she's noticing the pictures that she is developing. She's seeing the characters of Wonderland but they're in trouble. They're hurt and wounded. So she's trying to figure out how to get back to Wonderland. Obviously she finds her way back to Wonderland and she is trying to stop the Queen of Hearts from her just madness and destroying of everything good. It is super interesting though because I'm 400 pages in and Alice has yet to physically encounter the Queen of Hearts. Like they haven't had an interaction yet, which as I was turning the camera on to film this, I realized that and I just, that's interesting. But the chapter I just left off on, like the last sentence, Alice gets stabbed with a pair of scissors. <laughs> so like, as soon as I turn the camera off, I'm going to probably finish this because I need to know what is happening. I'm really thoroughly enjoying this. I think it really stays true to the original story. I haven't read Lewis Carroll's book, but I have seen the Disney movie many a time. And I can attest to that. I think this book plays off of the movie very well and it's a great continuation. I think that this story plays off of the movie very well and it's a great continuation of the story, but I think it has some great commentary just about life and politics and growing up and staying true to yourself. I was very pleased to see that even though this is, I think 10 or 11 years, I think it's 11 years, after Alice originally went to Wonderland, she is still the same girl and she just has this thirst for adventure and just believes that anything is possible and doesn't want to mold herself to be the stereotypical woman in England who gets married and has kids and doesn't have an idea for herself. She wants to be her own person. I love that life hasn't beaten that out of her and she's still very much that little girl and that she's still able to find her way back to Wonderland all these years later. I also think it has some just interesting ideas about, I don't wanna say politics, but the queen's whole motive for why she is destroying Wonderland, I think raises some great debate about monarchs and power and it is just beautifully done. This is definitely a solid four star book thus far. Depending how it ends, it might push it to a 4.5, we shall see. But I assume the next time I talk to you guys, I will be finished with this. So I think I'm going to go make a cup of tea because I'm actually really cold. That's why I'm wearing this fleece lined shirt that I always wear and my beanie. But I think that sounds wonderful and I'm gonna continue getting some work done. And that's about it. So I will check back in when I am finished with this magical book. Hello, lovely people. So it is 2.30, so it's been a little while. I did end up finishing on birthday. I'm kind of conflicted between a four and a 4.5. So we're going to kind of just let it sit and we will figure it out as I continue to read throughout the day. Rosie would like to say hello. This book was super great. I think it had such great messages. It was a great continuation of the story. It definitely had a dark twist. However, I think the ending was very hopeful and I really enjoyed that. I was almost done. I had like 30 minutes left of the audiobook and Alayla just was being a nutcase. So I took her to the dog park and we played for a little bit. So I finished it down there. And then I did start Part of Your World, which I'm like 
I think 10 or 15 minutes in. So I really don't have a whole lot to say about it. I don't actually know, now that I'm talking about it, I don't know what like the dark twist of that story is. I do know in listening for 10 minutes that Prince Eric seems very Maleficent. So I don't know, but I'm excited to get into that more. I did take a little bit of a break and I enjoyed a blueberry muffin and sipped on my tea. I did make a peach turmeric tea, which is very fun. I got it at a local tea shop. I also got this cup at a local tea shop over the weekend and I'm just really enjoying it. I'm almost done with this, just sipping on that a little bit, enjoyed my muffin. I'm still a little hungry, so I probably need like an actual meal. So I might make some soup that I have. But while I was eating my muffin, I did read Through the Woods. And this is a graphic novel that is a collection of stories that I completely, I missed that part entirely. Like it's multiple stories. So that was really fun, um, a super quick read. I think for anybody who hasn't read this or has read it, I suppose would make more sense. My favorite story in here is the one, um, A Lady's Hands Are Cold. That one was just super creepy and eerie and I loved it. All of these stories center around woods and how they're kind of dark, mysterious, dangerous places. Even though it was, dark and all of these stories like kind of have dreadful endings. I still really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with this. I think these would be fun like if you're young and are having a slumber party like this would be fun like stories around a campfire type of thing. This I am giving four stars maybe 4.5. Again I'm, I don't know I'm just indecisive today so I'm sure by tomorrow I'll have my mind made up, but it's either a four or 4.5, so we will see. So with that said, unbirthday, what I had left of this was 240 pages, and then Through the Woods was 208 pages. So that brings my total so far to 448 pages, which I'm pretty happy with. I do have a little bit more work I would like to get done for the day before I kind of close up shop and just read what I really want to. <laughs> I think next, um, after I finish what I need to for work, I really wanna pick up the Sailor Moon graphic novel. I'm just so excited. So I think this is going to be what I physically pick up next. If not this, if like I'm in an actual reading mood, I might pick up The Poet X or Legendborn. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm leaning more towards this. I do want to finish Check Please, but I don't know. I'm just not like, I'm not vibing with it right now. So that is everything. So I'm going to head back to work, maybe get a snack, maybe get an actual meal. I don't know. But regardless, whatever I do, I'm going to be listening to my audiobook, and I will hop back on here when I make some more progress with that. Hello, lovely people. So it's been a couple hours. It's actually almost 8 p.m. And I have done quite a bit of reading. I wrapped up work. I played with Alayla and I kind of just chilled for a little bit, went down a little bit of a TikTok rabbit hole. But I wanted to hop on here and catch you guys up with what I've been reading. So I did get further into my audiobook, uh, Part of Your World, and I think I'm about three hours. I forgot to check before I started filming. The whole plot of it is that at the end of the movie, Ariel, you know, defeats Ursula and lives happily ever after. So in this twisted tale, Ariel doesn't do that. And Vanessa, AKA Ursula, actually marries Prince Eric and just everything is awful. Um, Ariel doesn't have her voice. She has become the princess of Atlanta, Atlantica because Ursula has King Triton. We've just gotten to the point where Ariel has learned that her father might still be alive. So she has come back up to the land and is trying to investigate. There's also kind of this added 
fun layer that Prince Eric vaguely remembers her. So I am enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it as much as on birthday, but I want to give it a little bit um, longer. I'm definitely enjoying it enough to finish it, but on birthday just hooked me right away and this is taking me a little bit longer to get into. So I will probably listen to a little bit more of that tonight. As soon as I finish catching you guys up, I'm probably gonna go make myself a little bit of dinner and just kind of relax and read a little bit more. And in between, when I have some downtime, listen to that a little further. I also did get a little bit further in Check Please. I am on page, Alayla is just so excited. I'm on page 179, so I'm a little bit more than halfway through. Eric's just about to start his senior year, so this is the end. I'm kind of indifferent to it. There's parts of it I like, there's parts of it I'm not really connecting with. I do really wanna finish it, and I'm hoping something kind of happens that really draws me back into this story, because right now I'm just, eh. It's, it's just a solid like kind of middle of the road. It's a three star, which is kind of disappointing just because I loved the first book so much. You know, we still have time. We have half of the book here. I also read the first edition, first, I don't know why I'm struggling with words right now, of Sailor Moon, the Eternal Edition. This book was so much fun. Sailor Moon was my favorite TV show when I was little. I had the dolls, I had the toys, I had her Sailor Scepter, and I would, you know, transform into Sailor Moon while I watched it, so while it was like the music was playing. So it's really fun to revisit this as an adult just because there's so much nostalgia with it. Also, I have a cat named Luna, and I did name her Luna after Sailor Moon's cat luna it's just fun to finally be picking up the manga that in you know of this show that i just love so much so this was a solid four stars um i did have some problems with it just as an adult i don't remember the knowledge that she is only 14. some of this is not age appropriate question mark i also forgot how whiny and how much of a crybaby she is. She's kind of an unlikable main character, but like you're still rooting for her. It's this weird relationship. Also, she doesn't know that she's a guardian until Luna shows up and introduces this to her. And I feel like she just is picking up what she's supposed to do without any direction so it's kind of unrealistic which like not that this whole Sailor Moon in its entirety is realistic but I feel like she would need some sort of training like her and Luna need to hash it out in their secret underground tech center beneath the arcade I don't know but this was super fun I did enjoy it and I didn't get too hung up on anything. So solid four stars. We did meet most of the Sailor Scouts. So we have met Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and then this ends with uh, meeting Sailor Venus. I'm very excited and have every intention of picking up the second book, second manga. I would like to read this tonight and maybe even the third. I feel like we're starting to get very ambitious <laughs> with what I can accomplish tonight. I do plan to stay up a little bit, but not super late. I am going to Orange Theory at 9 a.m. tomorrow and I do very much value my sleep, so we shall see. I would like to, I do want to finish Check Please during this 24 hour readathon. I would really like to finish my audiobook as well, so those are my two priorities and I really just want to read this in general so I'm probably honestly going to pick this up. I did forget to mention so this is 304 pages according to Goodreads and that brings my total page count to 752 which I'm very happy with. I'm going to go make some dinner and see what else I can read. Yeah we're just gonna have a very chill night. 
So I will hop back on here probably again at some point this evening just with another kind of catch up with what I've been reading. So I'll talk to you then. Hello, lovely people. So it is Tuesday, April 20th, so it's the next day. If you hear my fur child crying, I just put her out back and she saw her best friend and now she's whining because she wants to play. So I'm about to take her outside, um, but I wanted to hop on here really quick and just give you guys a little bit of a wrap up. Sorry, not a wrap up, an update because I didn't end up vlogging the rest of last night. We actually had friends come over. We just kind of hung out and celebrated with them. They recently got engaged, which is, which is super exciting. Last night I did end up, I forgot to grab it. Let me grab it. I did end up finishing Check Please Volume 2. The second half of the book, I did end up liking it a lot more. I found it a lot more realistic, if that makes sense. I think my problem, the first half is very dialogue heavy there's a lot to read but I also felt like Eric's behavior was very not like realistic if that makes sense he just was like approaching things very maturely and although that's great I just feel like a college junior like I don't know I just didn't think it was super realistic the ending was beautiful so it ends obviously Eric's senior year he graduates and he, Jack proposes to him on center ice and it's just a very beautiful moment. I am giving it four out of five stars. I still, I really love the first book. I think honestly you could read the first book and not pick up this one. You would still really enjoy the story. I think this is a, a good continuation. It just wasn't everything I was looking for. And then I did end up listening to a little bit more of my audiobook. I'm about 75% of the way through. Um, I'm about 75% of the way through. I am enjoying it. I'm going to give you guys better thoughts on that when I do finish. So I did decide to make this a 48 hour vlog instead of 20, it was gonna be like 26. I was looking over all the books I've read this month. I've finished, once I finish this audiobook, it'll be 18 and today's the 20th. So I'm like kind of on track to read 30 books, finish 30 books in 30 days. So I've decided that's my new goal for April. So I'm going to extend this vlog to 48 hours, see how much more I can read. And you'll just get to come along with me and see what I can challenge myself to. So I need to take the demon outside now. I will hop back on here a little bit later when she's more docile. And now I'm in your pocket. people so it is several hours later um it is quarter of eight um i ended up getting super busy today so um i think the last clip i filmed of me talking alayla was just being a nutcase and i kind of got cut off we ended up eating breakfast and then we went grocery shopping i came back did a bunch of work, made a quick dinner, and then we all went and went on a fun little walk on this really amazing trail. It looks so magical, which is just really fun because I've been doing these Twisted Tail Disney books during this kind of reading vlog. So it was fun to kind of be somewhere that felt magical. Throughout today, I did end up finishing, completely forgot what it was called, Part of Your World, The um, Little Mermaid Twisted Tale, and I gave it four stars. I did end up really getting into the story. It just took a little bit to connect with it. I think the Twisted Tales, I think they're really fun and I'm enjoying them so far, but it's taking me like a third of the book to get into because I'm just a Disney fan, so I love the just original Disney story. So the fact that these are a little bit different and they're darker, it's just taking me like a second to reacclimate myself to the world and then adjust my perception. Yeah, I ended up really loving it. Of course, it had a happily ever after ending and I thought it was really cool to see Ariel just 
you know, be the strong leader that she is. And her and Eric just can't be separated. You know, true love always prevails. My one qualm with it, which is kind of small, I don't know, it just really bothered me. So because Ariel doesn't defeat Ursula, so she is banished back to Atlantis without her voice and Ursula is Vanessa and marries Prince Eric and they, you know, live together and Ursula still has Triton in captivity. So when Ariel is banished back to the kingdom, her sisters decide that Ariel has to be queen. Like she's the one that should take over. And if y'all remember, Ariel is actually the youngest sister. Unless I completely missed something, the rationale was that Ariel made this happen because she wanted to go be on land and she just wasn't happy being in the water. So she caused this whole big problem. So her sisters said that she had to take over and be queen and deal with it. And I just thought that very odd because like, like I said, she's the youngest. She has quite a few older sisters. Like none of them wanted to be queen, question mark. Like eventually one of them would have taken over. So like what was the plan, the succession planning and who should that have been? And also like Ariel has just proven herself to be like, completely reckless, kind of self-centered in making this decision to go to the land. And now her father is being held captive by the evil sea witch and Ursula is just causing havoc on the land. And that's who you want to be your queen? I, I don't know. That was my kind of qualm with it. I feel like we could have had the same story. She didn't have to be the queen. There would be like a few minor plot points that like maybe wouldn't have been as great because Ariel had like extra power because she was the queen. I don't know. Uh, it was still a good time. I did forget to mention earlier when I was talking about and wrapping up Check Please that um, did I start it? I did start it before this reading vlog. So what I had left and what I finished was 295 pages, which brings my page count to 1,047. And then part of our world, part of your world, goodness, sorry. That was 475 pages according to Goodreads. Unfortunately, I don't have a physical copy of it, but that's what Goodreads says. So that brings my total to 1,522. And then I also finished The Poet X. So this was absolutely incredible, definitely worth the wait, although I do recommend you just go out and pick it up. So this book is told in first. It's about a young girl in high school and it's just a coming of age story and how she's dealing with being very different on so many levels from her peers, racially different. She doesn't have the same religious beliefs as her family. She's a twin, so there's that kind of relationship complexity. She is a young woman who's just coming into her own and that's really frowned upon by her mother because she's so religious and just so incredible and so powerful. And and the whole story revolves around how she finds poetry and it really gives her an outlet and it really helps her to make sense of the world and become who she's meant to be. I wanted to share with you guys my favorite line and it's actually at the very end on page 345 if you're curious, but it just says, she tells me words give people permission to be their fullest self. I just, I love it. That is just so incredible. Words have so much power and this book was just so well written. I actually ended up picking up the audiobook to finish it. And the audiobook is narrated by Elizabeth Acevedo. And you could tell she just was so passionate and it was so much fun to listen to. Because it's told in verse, it was kind of like 
being at like a slam poetry festival or something. Again, because the author narrated it and she felt so passionate, she really brought that to the narration and it was an amazing experience. So I did give this five out of five stars. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I do think this book really highlights the complexity of mother-daughter relationships and how sometimes those can be very tense. At the end of the day, your mother does just want what's best for you and she's just trying her best to help you make it through the world. This book just has so many great messages to it. So what I had left of this was 265 pages, which brings my total to 1,787 pages thus far, which is kind of mind blowing. So like I was starting to say earlier with these two books, I have now finished 19 books in the month of April and today's the 20th. So I think if I keep going at this rate, I can read 11 books in 10 days and I can read 30 books, finish 30 books in 30 days. That is my new challenge to myself. As far as the rest of this vlog, because I do plan on ending this kind of 48 hour challenge to myself tomorrow at 10 a.m. I have three, maybe four books I'm going to focus on. We'll see how the night pans out. So I'm going to pick up volume two of Sailor Moon, The Eternal Edition. I'm very excited to continue with this. We were left off with a little bit of a cliffhanger in volume one. I'm going to sit back and enjoy this. I do also have volume three that I borrowed from my library. So if I do finish this and I just immediately wanna dive into this, either way, I'm probably going to read this tomorrow if I don't get to it tonight. I am also just really in a nonfiction mood, so I do want to pick this up. I don't know how far I'll get into it, but I am very excited. And then also just depending what I'm doing with the rest of my night, I might pick up another audiobook. I have three audiobooks on Libby queued up ready to start. I have Black Flamingo, The Vanishing Half, I believe is what it's called, and Instant Karma. Instant Karma and The Vanishing Half, I don't think I'm going to finish because I think both of them are like over 10 hours. I don't remember specifically. Instant Karma, I don't have a physical copy of unless I listen to the entire thing tonight, which I've done just depending what I'm doing with my evening. It's going to be hard to judge like how many pages I've read in that by tomorrow at 10 a.m. Vanishing Half, I do have a physical copy of so it'd be a little bit easier but we'll see and then black flamingo is actually only four hours as an audiobook so that i might be able to kind of fly through which i'm leaning towards picking that up because between like getting ready for bed tonight and kind of just unwinding and then getting ready tomorrow and just like while i'm making breakfast and whatnot i do want to have an audiobook so i think i'm going to go with that one so yeah that is my plan for the rest of the evening. Hopefully I will come back on here and update you before I just fall asleep again. And that is it. So I will talk to you guys soon. Hello, lovely people. So it is the next day. It is Wednesday, April 21st. Yes. It's a couple minutes after nine, so we have a little less than an hour until this 48 hour reading vlog um, concludes. Last night, after I last talked to you guys, I did end up reading volume two of Sailor Moon, the Eternal Edition, and I gave this one five stars. I was so invested in this story. It was such a a beautiful story. We really got to see kind of the love come out between Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask and they started to remember their former selves. I thoroughly am enjoying this. I don't at all think this is like the best thing written in the world but it's just really fun and I'm having a great time with it. It did conclude with another cliffhanger and I totally forget her name but the little the little girl, the like young looking Sailor Moon with pink hair, 
I forget her name, but she just came back. So I'm excited to pick up the third volume and continue with this. I'll probably pick up the third volume today and I'm definitely going to see if my library has the other edition so I can put them on hold and keep reading this. But with this book, it was 343 pages. So that brings our total to 2,130 pages read during this 48 hours. Like I said, it's a little less than an hour left. So I am just going to sit here, enjoy my coffee and start this book. And hopefully I'll get a little into it. I don't think I'll get super far, but that is my goal for the morning. So I will come back on here to wrap up what I read at the end of this uh, 48 hours. people so it is now I think past noon almost noon so I did wrap up my kind of reading vlog my 48 hour sort of readathon I ended up getting through 30 pages of this is your brain on food I am really enjoying this it's definitely very rooted in science and there's a lot of studies that are cited in here. But the author does a really good job of explaining everything and makes it very approachable to anybody who is unfamiliar with science and a lot of terms that I can't pronounce. I'm very much enjoying this. I can't wait to continue reading this. I actually did keep reading it after 10 o'clock, but I got to page 30 before 10. I guess kind of to wrap everything up then, I ended up finishing seven books. Sorry, I just counted that one. Seven books this past 48 hours. The first book I finished was Unbirthday, which I gave four and a half out of five stars. Really fun and a great introduction to the Disney Twisted Tales. This book I read 240 pages. I read Through the Woods, which was just another really fun graphic novel. It's a collection of short stories, graphic novel um, with a little horror mixed in. <laughs> this I gave four stars and it was 208 pages. I read the first volume of Sailor Moon the Eternal Edition which I gave four stars and I very much enjoyed. I read Check Please, which was, I read 295 pages from this and I gave this four stars. A fun conclusion to a nice little <laughs> mini series. Um, and then I finished Part of Your World, which I just listened to as an audiobook, so I don't have the physical book for, but that was 475 pages. And then I read The Poet X, which I gave five stars. Forgot to mention Part of Your World, I gave four stars. Poet X, I gave five stars, and I read 265 pages out of this. And then I read Sailor Moon, The Eternal Edition, Volume 2, which I gave five stars, and this was 343 pages. And then to wrap it all up, I read 30 pages of this. This is your brain on food. So all in all, I read 2,160 pages, which I am very happy with. Yeah, this was just a lot of fun. I really wanna continue doing these because when I'm forcing, I don't wanna say forcing because it's something I wanna do, but when I'm vlogging my experience reading, it makes me wanna read more. It's really just igniting my love of reading even further. So I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog. I hope you just continue to have the most lovely day. Bye.